On April 3, 1934, in Decatur, Illinois, a baby was born to Wayne in Virginia. They decided to name their brand new bundle of joy Richard Wayne Peck. Peck's mother was a Wesleyan University graduate in home economics, and his father owned a service station in this mid-sized Midwestern town. In 1956, Peck studied at DePauw University, where he earned a bachelor's degree in English. His junior year at DePauw, he decided to study abroad at the University of Exeter in England. Upon completing college, Peck was drafted into the U.S. Army as a chaplain's assistant where he spent two years serving in Stuttgart, Germany. After he returned from his military service, Peck completed a master's degree at Southern Illinois University. He began his career as a high school teacher, but much to Peck's dismay, he was transferred to a junior high school to teach English. He liked his students, but after several years, he became very discouraged. Fortunately, however, it was with those junior high school students where Peck became familiar with contemporary adolescent problems. In 1971, Peck left teaching to begin writing. He decided to focus on writing books for teenagers that featured the problems he had seen. He observed that young adults wanted approval from their peers, and they seek reassurance from their reading materials. He believes that in a young adult novel, the reader meets a worthy young character who takes one step closer to maturity, and he or she takes that step independently. It was then, in 1971, when Peck wrote his first novel, Don't Look and It Won't Hurt. This book tells the story of 15-year-old middle child Carol Patterson, who isn't leading a very sad life, but she's definitely not leading a very happy life either. Carol longs for a life a little less ordinary. She is portrayed as a very responsible teenager who does all she can to help her single mother out by caring for her little sister Liz, all the while steering clear from her older sister Ellen's bad habits. Then, to her family's surprise, Ellen becomes pregnant and is forced to move into a home for unwed mothers. This shock unbalances the normalcy of the small family, and Carol begins finding herself taking thrilling risks, like dating the school bad boy. After years of turning away from problems so they couldn't hurt her, Carol suddenly realizes she must experience life's pain in order to better appreciate its joys. Don't Look and It Won't Hurt is realistic fiction, and in 1992, it was made into the movie Gas, Food, and Lodging, which tells about a waitress trying to find romance while raising two daughters in a trailer park. Voices After Midnight was published in 1989 and tells how young Chad and his family move from California and rent a town home in New York City. Late at night, in the, this 100-year-old home, he begins to hear voices. Later, he finds his brother Luke and his sister Heidi are hearing these strange voices in their new home as well. Upon investigating where the voices are coming from, the children find themselves slipping out of their own time back into 1888. This historical mystery keeps its reader on the edge. A Long Way from Chicago, published in 1998, is a children's story in novels, which is also known as a short story cycle. The stories involve several week-long vacations of two children, brother and sister, over the period of several years. Joey and Mary Alice Dowdell spend their summers with their resilient and crafty grandmother in Illinois. The setting for Shotgun Chetham's Last Night Above Ground is in 1929. In this story, Grandma defends her town by putting on a show for a newsman starring a corpse and a shotgun. In another story, the time is 1931, and it is called a one-woman crime wave. Grandma steals catfish from the sheriff's club, and although she could find herself in a whole lot of trouble, she does it for a very good reason. The last of the stories takes place in 1942. 
the troop train, Joey, now Joe, and in the Air Army Air Corps, is heading through Grandma's town on a train and hopes to catch a glimpse of the strong woman he remembers as he goes off to fight in World War II. This book is jam-packed with adventure, humor, and information. This was my personal favorite because I can just imagine having that much fun with my own grandmother. Peck was awarded the Newbery Honor in 1999 for this outstanding book. A Year Down Yonder is the sequel to A Long Way from Chicago and was published in the year 2000. It takes place during the recession of 1937. 15 year old Mary Alice is sent to live with her larger than life grandmother in Illinois and comes to a better understanding of this fearsome woman. In the year 2000, A Year Down Yonder won several awards, such as the American Library Association Notable Book, the American Library Association Best Book for Young Adults, The Book List Best Book of the Year, The School Library Journal Best Book of the Year, and in 2001, The Newbery Medal. Richard Peck's books fall into many genres. Just to name a few, they are horror, mystery, occult, social commentary, historical, and realism. In many of his books, he develops a theme in which an individual steps away from the group to achieve independence. I have found it extremely fascinating to find that Peck refuses to step into the age of technology. In fact, he has written all of his books via typewriter and has no intention on ever owning a computer. On top of that, he's written 37 books and he has written them all in the span of the last 37 years, thus calculating approximately one book per year. In the words of Mr. Richard Peck, I read because one life isn't enough, and in the page of a book, I can be anybody. I read because the words that build the story become mine, to build my life. I read not for happy endings, but for new beginnings. I'm just beginning myself, and I wouldn't mind a map. I read because I have friends who don't, and young, though they are, they're beginning to run out of material. I read because every journey begins at the library, and it's time for me to start packing. I read because one of these days, I'm going to get out of this town, and I'm going to go everywhere and meet everybody, and I want to be ready.